Hey everyone, good morning from Countryside Japan. So one thing I just wanted to let everyone know, I'm still working on the video that I promised about how I uh, found and renovated and paid for our IKEA here in rural Japan. But uh, yesterday I actually had the real pleasure of uh, meeting a subscriber that actually we had a kind of a work related uh, meeting and after we're done he told me he's like hey I just want to let you know that it's a real pleasure to meet you in person because I've been watching your channel and it really really caught me by surprise and really really made my day and uh, so we got to talking about Akiyas and and because he's really really interested in one and the different uh, uh, difficulties of uh, being able to finance one or being able to just live in Japan because of different residency requirements and all those kind of uh, similar topics that you that you have out there so then he was uh, talking about I wish someone would um, explain the differences of Akia or what really is an Akia so uh, I just gonna do this quick and prompt to hear my way to work is that Basically, an Akiya, it literally translates to open house. For clarification purposes, I guess I should have used vacant house, an unoccupied house, or even an empty house. But as you can see, there are lots of different terms that you will find on the internet, but not necessarily that it's abandoned. And an open house can mean that it's a vacant, not necessarily abandoned, not necessarily that there are no rightful owners or anything like this. So. In our case right here, this Sakiya was no longer an Akiya because it's not vacant, right? We live in it, thank God. Uh, but this one right here was probably vacant for about five years or so. But the son, he was the rightful owner, he lived in Tokyo and no longer lived here. And they listed this particular house on a local website. So I guess what I want to explain real quickly, if I can, is that just because you hear all these different horror stories about in Akiya, how difficult it is to buy, how difficult it is to find, well, that's probably because of the the way the word, I guess, Akiya is used. So you hear the worst case scenario stories about how it's so hard to find the rightful owner or if there's anyone at all and so on and also really what is an akia bank because uh an akia bank is basically like a database uh ran by the local municipality where people uh will kind of list their akia their house uh through the municipality and they kind of introduce the the person that wants to buy with the with the seller and stuff like that Unfortunately, many of the uh, Kia banks are not very well ran. So they are not uh, the best quality pictures. It's not a real estate agent where they're motivated by the money and so on. And then also, also if you just find like an Akiya, a again, an empty house on a local website, such as the way we did, they're usually relatively cheap. So the incentive to sell is not very high so all of these are the kind of topics that i'm trying to cover on my next video so i want to let everyone know i'm still working on it i'm trying to be as thorough as possible but not make it too dang long uh, fortunately it is getting to about 40 minutes so my apologies up front if anyone is interested in watching it but i'm also going to provide some little markers there so that you can fast forward to the topic of interest such as you know how i funded the renovation or how I bought it, how I found it and so on. So just please stay tuned for that. All right, well, time to make it to work. As you can see, it's a beautiful foggy day. <laughs> this is typical almost every morning. It is November 3rd and uh, actually the weather's not that bad. So yeah, right now I'm driving La Chingona every day because we're in the process of buying another vehicle. But uh, yeah, she is going to be earning her money this weekend because I am in the process of picking up some more wood. So I got some wood from the uh, the stove, uh, I guess dealership that installed our, 
our stove. And uh, so last weekend they had this deal where you paid $75 and I, uh, you pretty much go and chop your own wood. They cut it in little blocks and then you had to chop it with your own ax. And uh, this is about two truckloads and I got one more truckload to do. So I'll be working on that tomorrow. And then I also have a video coming about uh, driving there through the beautiful countryside. So please stay tuned for that. It takes a while for me to get to these and clean them up and so on. All right, folks, again, uh, I just wanted to put that out real quick and uh, give a shout out to, to Ron. Thanks for subscribing. It was a pleasure meeting you. And then in a way, try to meet everyone else that has been watching. And, um, and hopefully I could provide good content for you. Uh, this is definitely just a hobby for me. It's, not, it's definitely not a, a money a producing machine here. Uh, so, uh, but you know, if you don't mind like keen subscribing and sharing so that we can spread the word and hopefully we can make reality uh, the dream for many other folks to move to the countryside of Japan and take on a project like this. All right, folks. Thanks again. Have a great day. Bye.